What's going on everybody? It's Max the Catfish and we are back with video number two in our beginner's tutorial series for Stellaris. In our last video, I explained the user interface elements around the game. We talked a little bit about technology and how to hire new leaders, as well as how to build ships and your first starting steps into the galaxy, right? We took our science vessels and we sent them out into space to explore more about the stars. I'm gonna unpause the game now and we're gonna let that happen. You'll notice our science vessels moving across the hyper lanes here. And we've got a new science vessel too that needs some work. So I'm going to assign him to survey some of these stars out that way. So that's going to take a little bit of time, but we should be almost finished with surveying Alpha Centauri. There's actually a lot going on in this system. So our science vessel is taking their time, checking each and every planetary body. You can speed this up at this point by clicking on the buttons in the upper right-hand corner, the plus and minus icons, which will speed up the speed of the game or slow it down, which I love doing in the middle of a really big combat between ships because ships will shoot at each other and fight each other in slow motion. It's very epic, it's very cool. Uh, but we're gonna speed this up a little bit because I want the science vessel to finish her work on Alpha Centauri. Before that could happen, we got a pop-up related to traditions. We talked about how gaining unity will unlock new empire-wide bonuses for your empire. These are called traditions. So let's take a look at the traditions panel. This is a monster of a panel. It's really uh, sort of domineering, but it's pretty simple on the, uh, on the onset. If you click select, you are going to be able to spend 300 unity. Here's the cost. 300 of your unity, we've got 334 right now, to adopt a new tradition tree. There's about, what is this? Nine different tradition trees at the base level of the game without any DLC. And it's a bit overwhelming to look at this, but you'll notice that each one of these trees fits into one of these seven slots in your traditions. You won't be able to adopt every tradition tree for an empire, so you're gonna have to pick and choose, and it's a permanent decision. So you wanna be very careful about which one of these adopt you adopt and when. I'm gonna give you just the really quick beginner tutorial tip, very quick and simple. Your first tradition should be probably either discovery or expansion. Discovery is all about finding out about the stars, learning out about what's out there in the galaxy, who is even there, where are these anomalies that we've been told about, and how do we research them quicker? It also gives you bonuses to your research speed and benefits to your researchers as well. So it'll make researching technologies cheaper for your empire comparatively to other empires. Discovery is usually the tree that I take and I recommend for anybody who isn't going super aggressive. If you have to play super aggressive because of your empire and the way that you're playing it out, you should probably take expansion first. And sometimes I even take discovery and then expansion because both traditions are very good for the early game and throughout the game as well, but they play the biggest role at the very start of the game. If you're going a bit more aggressive, if you're a little bit more territorial, if you wanna have a massive empire, you wanna take it as quickly as possible and grow your empire as quickly as possible, you should take expansion first. This gives you benefits to grabbing new space and taking, uh, taking portions of space for your empire, claiming them for your own. It also allows your planets, when you build new colonies, to start with even more population than they would otherwise. And the more population you have on a planet, the more resources and the more work you can have done to advance your empire. So expansion is a really good one if you wanna be a bit more of an expansionist, a bit more of an aggressive play. And discovery is just a flat out good one for basically anybody to take, barring some very rare circumstances. So we'll take discovery. Before we do that, I wanna explain a little bit about traditions. Adopting a tradition will give you a bonus when you do so, and it's going to unlock this tradition tree that you'll need to unlock by spending more unity in the future. So you're gonna see that the, each one of these trees has five total traditions in them, right? All of these do. And the discovery tree has these two leading, sort of like mini tech trees almost, but paid for using unity. And 
Just by adopting the discovery tree, we're going to unlock some benefits, which I'll show you in just a second. You'll notice that we have a benefit to the research speed of anomalies. So that's pretty sweet as well. I'm gonna click adopt. Do you wanna spend the 300 unity? Yes, I do. And now discovery is locked into our tradition panel. We can't undo that decision. So pick wisely. Now in a little bit of time, we're gonna have 343 unity. We're going to be able to grab a new tradition and we're probably going to unlock one of the uh, traditions inside of the discovery tree. But for now, we don't have the unity, the unity to do that. Unlocking discovery has unlocked an edict. And I wanna explain edicts because it's something that goes sort of unknown by new players for a long time, but actually they're really powerful and, and they've got some pretty big effects on the game. If you go over to the left side menu here and choose edicts, you're gonna see a list of a bunch of just names and, and you're expected to know what each one of these is. You'll actually find out if you scroll over them. These are temporary toggleable bonuses for your empire. Sometimes they're all good and it's just straight up benefit. Sometimes you're actually gonna make a bit of a trade, right? There's gonna be some good things, there's gonna be some bad things associated with them. You'll see whether they're good or bad based on the color of the numbers here. So all of the numbers in Map the Stars are green. This survey speed plus 25%, discovery chance plus 10%, the hyperlane detection range plus one. Those are all positive things. They are written in green. If it is a negative effect on your empire or maybe a trade-off, right, for the positive bits, they will be red. If it's sort of unknown whether it's positive or negative, it's sort of neutral, they'll be written in yellow. So just keep an eye on that when you are choosing edicts. Every edict has an activation and upkeep cost. And this upkeep is initially going to be taken out of what is called your edicts fund. And this is a static pool of unity, it's separate from your unity gain. It doesn't touch how much unity you get per, per month. And this edicts fund is designed to first have the upkeep of each one of your edicts taken out of it. And if you exceed your edicts fund, if we were to activate map the stars and encourage political thought, right? Each one of these costs 15 unity. We would exceed this by 10 unity. And that unity will be taken out of our unity income from our empire. I don't really want that to happen, not this early in the game. Traditions are very powerful and you need to build unity in order to unlock them. So I'm just gonna unlock up to our edicts fund cap, map the stars, which is the which is the edict that we got from the, uh, the tradition that we just unlocked, the discovery tradition. And if I check this, you'll notice that 14.5, it rounds down to 14, 14.5 out of 20 of our edicts fund is being taken and this is now active. All of our science vessels around the galaxy are now faster at surveying the stars and the astral bodies that exist in each one of these systems, like what just happened there. And we've got a whole bunch of pop-ups that are popping up, popping up, popping up, popping up, uh, that we, uh, I'm gonna dismiss right now because there is a lot. We will say, we just finished grabbing Alpha Centauri. And so this entire system is now fully surveyed. And because it's fully surveyed, it is possible for us to send a construction vessel, not a science vessel, a construction vessel, to take it into our empire and make it ours. It's kind of fitting for humans to do this, right? This is, this is one of the star systems outside of our own in real life that we think might, might have some habitable planet on it. So we're gonna take a a construction vessel, send it to Alpha Centauri and build a star base. Let's go ahead and do that right now. You'll notice when I when I uh, scrolled over that, let's cancel that action really quick just to show you. Building star bases costs alloys, which we use to build new ships. And it also costs influence. Remember I talked about how influence was a resource that doesn't really fluctuate how much you gain or lose very often, very frequently. It is a very, very limited resource. And that's by design. It's to prevent you from expanding infinitely into space and just having this be a game of racing people to take the most stars. Instead, we have to use our limited influence to make smart decisions of which stars we want to colonize, which planets we want to colonize. And I see a planet here that is 85% habitable. It's almost as good as Earth, not 
not as good, but almost as good. Maybe there are some angry monsters here that, that come out of caves at night. Maybe the oxygen level is just a little bit reduced and it requires our workers to have supplementary oxygen, right, as they're working. These kind of things determine whether a planet is going to be habitable for your species or not. So you've got to keep those in mind, but I can see that this is a habitable world. Our citizens would be very happy on it. And so we're going to build a star base here first. You can't colonize planets unless they exist in your empire. So keep that in mind. You've got to colonize them first by building star bases. Now, we've got a pretty important pop-up that pops up for every player at the beginning of the game. And it is asking us, hey, we think there's alien life out there. We've heard signals. We are getting these strange radio messages from outer space. We haven't met them yet. But we've got to think a little bit about how are we going to interact with aliens if we first meet them, right? What is our interaction with them going to be like? Are we going to just, we're gung-ho, uh, greet them with open arms, come on in, let's hug it out, right? In so doing, we're showing people that we're a friendly species, that we will learn more about them much more quickly. They'll be able to establish contact with us much more quickly, but maybe that leaves us somewhat vulnerable to attacks. Maybe that makes us a little bit more vulnerable to an alien species that might want to do us harm. It's something to consider. Maybe instead we want to be a little bit more cautious. We don't want to form immediate relations with aliens. We want to spend the time, take the time to learn about them before we establish a communication channel with them where we're just chatting, right? It With diplomacy. If we do the cautious route, it's much less likely that aliens are going to be able to negatively impact us in those first few sessions, right? We're taking it slow, we're taking it easy. Now, we aren't an aggressive species, so we can't take this last option. This is actually only allowed for people who are a bit aggressive, who are a bit, a, a bit more militaristic, but we could instead choose to ward off other aliens. We don't want to hear from them. It, we are going to be able to attack them very early. Even before establishing communications, we could blow up their ships, which normally you can't do. But that's not that's not who we are. We're kind of interested in finding out about aliens, but maybe it's wise to be cautious. Maybe we should be careful about who we interact with and make communications with. So I'll choose it's wise to be cautious. This is just one of many decisions you're going to have to make in Solaris as you play the game. And these pop-ups are going to come up from things like anomalies, from things like meeting new aliens, from things like entering systems that have really abnormal things that are happening in them. There's a lot of decisions to be made in the game, but for now, our first decision is made. We can wipe the sweat off our brow and move on, taking Alpha Centauri into our empire. This is only going to take a couple of days to build this starbase. You can see the percentage uh, completion here in the bottom left-hand corner because I have our construction vessel selected, right? So that's just gonna take just a second. And now we own Alpha Centauri. This is part of our empire. And our empire borders have expanded to contain Alpha Centauri in it, which is pretty sweet. Now, We've got a bunch of resources in here, 12 minerals, four energy credits. This is a really rich system on the scale of systems. You'll notice that up here in Tachvan, we've got four energy credits and only four society research. We have way more in Alpha Centauri. So as you're expanding your empire, as you're expanding your, your control of space, you should give some attention to these, right? Taking a system that has a lot of resources in it, but no planets is a really strong strategic move in Solaris. And taking systems that sort of, uh, let's say, I, I call this a choke point, that exist between two systems and that's the only way for people to travel, that is a very strong strategic move to do as well. Looking at our space here, I see a couple of choke points that are very strong, defensive, militaristic decisions that you might wanna take. It would be really important for us to grab these two systems here because then we can put a massive armada there and people trying to get into our space would have to fly through our armada. There's no other way for them to go. And then I see one here, which is pretty close to our space, a little bit too close. And I see one here. And that's probably what we're gonna head for. I think it would be really smart 
for us to grab these two systems here and start building them up as a defensive position. If an opponent takes all of your planets, you lose the game. You're out completely. So it's very important for you to defend planets as best you can. And one of the ways that you can do that is by taking these strategic choke point decisions uh, and systems here. So I'm gonna take our science vessel. I'm actually gonna divert them. They're gonna do the surveying here. And then I want them to survey these two systems here. Remember, we can't actually bring them into our empire until we fully surveyed them. So I'm gonna have them survey there. And then we're going to have this vessel do something very similar. Let's survey that and head this way. Cool. This guy is kind of be, gonna be like the cleanup crew almost. I'm gonna have them survey all of the star systems that, uh, ooh, you know what? We've got one in the way here, hold on. Let's survey this direction because that is a system with a continental world on it that I'm gonna want to, um, that I'm gonna want to colonize. And let's have them clean up all of the other systems that we're not paying attention to right now, like that. Cool. So they're gonna do that automatically. I don't have to pay them any mind. I've given them a ton of responsibilities. So they're just gonna do that as they take the time to do it. We've got a whole bunch of things that just popped up. So let's do these one at a time. We've got a bunch of pop-ups here. The first one, this is pretty important when you see these pop up because it means that something aggressive has happened. And we've actually seen it happen in this system here of Vilmar. Some alien vessels try to engage and attack our peaceful science vessel. And that's a little bit strange. Like, who was that? We can actually find out by clicking on the system. Sorry, the pop-ups are in the way. These icons here with a red exclamation mark represent that there was a vessel there that was being aggressive against our science vessel. But we don't know what the vessel was. We don't know who that alien was. We know nothing about them. We can, however, start to research and learn a little bit more about them, which would be pretty smart. We've got news that we've found a new alien species, which is super interesting. So that's all this pop-up said. Here is the pop-up where we had some kind of encounter with some kind of alien that we should probably do some research on. We've made first contact with an unknown entity. And while that was happening, we had a science vessel find out that there's a new uh, anomaly somewhere out in space. This one I'll dismiss. But over this system is a new icon. It's this little radar dish icon, right? That's blue, hexagonal. And if we click on that, we can see that there was an alien species that looked something like this. It might be kind of important for us to find out who they are. What do they want? Why were they aggressive against us? Why did they try to blow up one of our ships? And to do that, we have to assign an envoy. You're going to do this for every single alien species that you meet out in the galaxy to a certain extent. At a certain point, you get really good at deciphering and understanding other aliens, but because this is our very first alien contact, we need to figure out more about them. So I'm gonna assign an envoy. Most empires start with two, our empire is starting with three. We're lucky that way. And we assign an envoy the same way kind of that you assign a leader to a role, right? We choose an envoy and choose accept. And now that envoy is going to work to decipher the alien language and try to find out more about what its intentions are. We know nothing about them. But over time, through a series of these, re of these researches, our researcher is going to find out a little bit more about them, a little bit more about them, a little bit more about them, until we can finally understand them and their intentions. Now, while that was happening, we had access to a new tradition. Remember that we unlocked the discovery tradition tree here. And so we've got the option of one of these first two starting traditions. We can choose if we wanted to, not a good idea, but instead we could take a second tradition if we'd like to. Maybe there's a really good adoption effect that you need right now. That's all you're gonna be able to get is the adoption effect. But uh, for now, I wanna finish the discovery tree because it's pretty important for us to do so. And we've got two options. The first one is we can increase the level cap of our scientists. So our scientists can be smarter over time as they gain experience, learning about the world, researching new technologies, etc. Or we could take a technology that further compounds on the tech that we took earlier, which gave us, or sorry, the technology that we took earlier, map the stars, that allowed us to increase their survey speed. So now we're getting an additional 
35% survey speed on top of the 35% that we got from Map of Stars. 25%, I think it was. That's that's pretty good. Plus, the ability for our science, it says science ship disengagement chance. What this means is if they come into contact with an aggressive alien species, like what just happened, they're going to be able to disengage from that combat and stay alive 50% more if that were to happen. And because the because space is this really big unknown place and we're a little bit scared about what's going on, that's a pretty good thing to take, especially early in the game. So I'm gonna take to boldly go. This is my starter, my starter moves usually in almost every game of Solaris. And we grabbed our next tradition, awesome. So, Alpha Centauri, I forgot to do this. We talked about how juicy this system was, but we didn't do anything with it. And, and we could tell that we didn't because the resources are still underneath that system sitting here. So I'm gonna take my science, or sorry, my construction vessel, right click on the system like we did before in Seoul. And I'm gonna choose build mining stations, holding shift. I'm gonna choose build research stations. And now they're gonna queue up all of that to, to happen on that system. We're gonna grab all of that. But I'm most interested actually, not in the resources that are here, but in the planet. Alpha Centauri 3. We can see a little bit about this planet. We can see that our species is habitable on this planet. They would actually do very well here. 85% when that habitability value is green is good. That means your population when they live there are likely going to be able to produce more resources, live happier, have lower crime rates, and have more stability, all of which is really good for a planet. That said, Unfortunately, this planet is very small. This is a small planet, smaller than Earth. Um, the size of planets ranges from size, I think it's size 10 to size 25 at, at the biggest. I think there's even a possibility in some DLCs for planets to grow even larger than that and you to actually increase the size of your planet, which is pretty cool. If not, that's a mod. I can't quite remember. But uh, planet size 12 is pretty low on the spectrum. That means it's not gonna be able to support the same population as our larger planets, but it's still worth taking. But I see a trait on this planet. This planet is bleak. Life struggles to survive here. We barely are going to be able to keep a population alive. It is not very fun to live here. And because of that, not only is the habitability of our species on this planet decreased by five, but also if we try to make food on this planet, produce food on this planet, our food income is reduced by 10% on this planet alone. You'll notice even that it says max agricultural districts minus two. And if we take a look at potentially our ability to build farms, we can only build three farms on this planet. It's, it's a terrible planet to try to grow food. So this may not be the center of our food production, but I do see that this planet has some really strong uh, specialization potential for us moving forward. The size of your planet determines how many districts you can build. You can see that we've got 10 maximum districts right now. It's actually 12. Two of them are blocked by these red slash throughs. And usually what that means is there is something that's preventing you from being able to build there right? Something is preventing you from being able to build a district in that part of your planet. Districts, you should think of as how we portion off portions of a planet to specialize in something. So we can have city districts. This is parts of our planet that we've proportioned off for people to live. And at the same time, a city district is going to increase the amount of housing. We can have more population living on that planet because our cities are built vertically, right? We've got industrial districts, which are these big churning portions of industry that are turning our minerals into those advanced resources that we talked about in the last tutorial into consumer goods and alloys. And uh, both city districts and industrial districts are unlimited. You could fill an entire planet with city districts or industrial districts if you want to. The other districts are not like this. These are limited based on a variety of features on that planet, which we expanded pressing the features button. And the variety of positive features will determine how many of each district can be built. You don't have to worry about this so much. You don't have to worry about this portion of features. They're kind of automatic. And as you play the game, they're just kind of gonna 
with past you. You're not going to think about them very much. But there are negative features on almost every planet that prevent you from building completely freely, right? We've got a dense jungle here, and it is blocking two of our agriculture districts. Remember, two of our bleak agriculture districts that we can barely create food on. So maybe that's not that big of a deal, right? Maybe we don't have to clear this dense jungle. It's not that big of a deal. Toxic kelp also is finding its way into our caves and our mining districts, and it's preventing us from building more mining districts. But you'll notice something. Both agriculture districts and mining districts have a maximum number of three on this planet. This planet's not rich in minerals. It doesn't, it's not rich even in the minerals that are required to make food, right? Because of the bleak uh, trait on this planet. But what it is rich in is swaths of land that we can use to generate energy. In fact, we can generate basically an unlimited number of generator districts because of how much land is perfect on this planet for us to generate energy on it. That's awesome. That's really great. My tip for players is you generally want a planet to be very specialized. Your capital won't be at first, but your other planets should be. You should find out what you want to do on that planet. And this is a great planet for generator districts. So we're going to do that. Now, I want to colonize this planet. And it's funny that this is coming up. This is actually a really big pain point for new players. I want to colonize this planet, but it has an anomaly on it. We can't quite figure out what it is, but there's something about Alpha Centauri 3 that gives us pause. We're not really sure if we should colonize it. Something is strange down there and we don't quite know what. I'm gonna show you what that is, how to find out about it, how to clear the anomaly and how to colonize planets in our next tutorial. If you're liking the tutorial series, let me know down below. Let me know if there's anything that you'd like more explanation on. This is our second, I think, pop probably in the series. So let me know if I skipped over anything or if there's more explanation that you need and I'll respond to your comments as I get them. Thank you so much for watching. If you, this was helpful, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and I will see you in the next video where we talk about colonization of planets and anomalies. See you soon.